It is four in the morning. I haven't been able to sleep because I saw all these posts about this new feature in Photoshop called Generative Fill. And basically it allows you to use AI to insert anything into your photographs or expand your borders, replace your background. The results are pretty crazy. It's a little nerve wracking, I have to say, because this is either going to be an amazing tool that all photographers can use, or this might be the end of photography as we know it. Let's check this out. Now, if you're a photographer, you've probably seen this on your social media. This was just released a few days ago. And if you're not a photographer, well, be prepared to see what the future of imaging looks like. If you wanna start using this, you need to go to your Creative Cloud. You need to download the newest version of Photoshop. At the moment, I think that's version 24.5. And then you also have to come down to beta apps and make sure that you download the new Photoshop beta. That's gonna give you access to this new generative fill. And let's jump right into it. Now I've been playing with this all night and I'm totally mind blown. I'm gonna show you some images that I've already edited and then I'm gonna do some live and uh, see what it does. Here's a headshot that I took of myself a couple years ago. Watch this, let's just select this, come up here to crop. And now we have an image that's really tall and narrow. Let's go ahead and expand this back to where it used to be. Now using the marquee tool, I've selected all of the white. I'm gonna come up here to generative fill. I'm not gonna hit anything, I'm just gonna hit generate. Let's see if this can replace the pixels I just deleted, make them look authentic, and keep that shallow depth of field. At this point, I don't know what to believe. Holy shit. Uh, how is this reality? Like I've played with Mid Journey and this is a whole other level. Let me go ahead and flatten this image. I'm gonna throw the original file on top so we can see the before and after. I mean, can you tell what image is the original image? And even if you can, does it matter anymore? Like, I mean, these are totally acceptable. Let's zoom into 100%. You can see the shallow at the field here. I can't see any of the edges of where this created fake pixels. I don't even know if I'm looking at the right image. <laughs> if this can do it on a face, let's see what else it can do it with. All right, here's a crazy dried up riverbed that I took in Curacao. Let's go ahead and do the same thing. Now I've seen some people say, once you make your selection, you wanna to go to feather and you wanna add some level of feathering. Let's do five pixels. Let's go up to generative fill and hit generate. Now this one actually seems like it would be easier than a face, but I don't know what to expect. If you need a horizontal image instead of a vertical image, maybe this would be the answer. <laughs> like, I don't even know what to believe. It's one thing to use AI generators and to create art that's not connected to your art at all, but then to augment your photographs like this, it's, <laughs> it's pretty startling. Look at that, it even added like a highlight up here in the top left of where the sun would be. I'm gonna flip this on and off. And now as you look at this, you can say, oh, I can tell where the borders are. But if I turn this on and then say, draw where you think the edges are, I don't know that you could do that. All right, here's an image we have from one of the very first F-Stoppers videos we ever did. Let's see if we can actually put close back on the model. I'm gonna come up here and hit select subject. I'll go ahead and just subtract her head off of this selection just in case. Let's go ahead and expand the selection by, let's do it by eight pixels since the sweater would be a little bit less form fitting. And now let's come up here and type in gray turtleneck sweater. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? That looks really good. Her arm position's changing? What in the world? Look at that. I think that one's the best. Gosh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right, let's move on to something else. All right, faces and riverbeds. Let's get really difficult. Let's jump into architectural photography. Here's a shot that I took of New York City from a helicopter. Now at the bottom of this photograph, I didn't get enough of Central Park, so I feel like it doesn't have the weight at the bottom of the image that I would prefer. And just for fun, let's go ahead and make the left side of the image expanded as well. So we're gonna come up to the crop tool once again, let's extend this a little bit. I'm not gonna go too crazy with it, something like that. There is no way it's gonna be able to do this. Not in any kind of convincing manner. This video is sponsored by Click a Snap, which is a brand new social media platform. 
It's one part Instagram, one part Shutterstock, and one part Google AdSense all wrapped into one. The most unique element of Click-A-Snap is that you get paid up to $9 for every 1,000 views your images get, which is honestly much more than we get paid on YouTube. And if you want, you can choose to sell your photos on the platform as well. Unlike every other social media platform with Click-A-Snap, you don't have to give up your image rights, you don't have to figure out how to game some algorithm, and there's no data harvesting or selling to third-party entities. If you're a photographer looking for a new way to display your work while also making money, join Click a Snap in the link below. <laughs> how, how, how can it do that? Now, as I turn this on and off, there are some weird artifacts, like this looks very sloppy. There's not nearly as much detail but check this out, it has different variations. So I can come here if I don't like that one. And this one really looks bad. Now this one looks a little bit better. So it didn't do great. Let's also scroll over here to the left side of the frame. It's pretty wild. It's not perfect by any means. There are some limitations. This one's actually pretty good. And I can tell the sharpness isn't quite there, but if I had to absolutely extend this image to the left and I didn't want to spend a ton of time cloning or potentially cloning pixels that are repeating themselves, I mean, this is a graphic designer's dream. It's not reality because obviously New York doesn't look like this, but I don't think you could ever really tell. It's even added a digital billboard over there. That is pretty incredible. All right, so let's try to restore an old photograph. This is an old photo of my wife. Don't tell her she's in this video. I'm going to go ahead and crop it and let's go ahead and just look how quickly I can do this. We're going to generate the background of this beautiful Olin Mills style photo. Boom. Let's fix the bottom. Not a big deal, right? Well, let's go ahead and try to get this glare out of here. So I'm going to just kind of make the shirt highlighted like that. Can it remove the glare while keeping the dress looking normal? Okay, that didn't look too great, but let's look at these varieties. <laughs> look at look at option number two. Are you kidding me? Look at what it was. That almost, the original with the glare almost looks like the AI, and the repair looks correct. That is unbelievable. Let's move on. Here's a landscape shot I did of my neighborhood. One thing that always bothered me about this image is this roof line down here. Well, you know we can quickly get rid of that, right? We'll just select that. Generative, generative fill. That's the worst name. Why did they name it that? Can everyone else say generative fill easier than me? Generative, generative, generative fill. Boom, look at that. House is gone. Now, another thing that you can do that's really wild is you can add things into your photographs. So, we own a boat here in Puerto Rico, and I thought it would be cool to have the boat in the photo, right? Well, maybe I can just add it here. Let's go ahead and add 42 foot Silverton yacht. See if it adds our boat into this photograph. That'd be pretty cool. We didn't recognize your prompt as English. Okay, I can't do that. So let's just put um, small yacht. Now, one thing I'm curious to see is how does it mask it in and what is the lighting conditions? Does it make it actually look realistic? Okay, that is not a yacht, but it is a pretty cool looking boat. Look at the colors on this thing. It looks really good. Now, there is some weird little thing in the back. I don't know what that is, but check this out. It's created a mask, so I can just go ahead and get rid of that. I don't know what that is. I know this isn't a Photoshop course, but I'm going to also just do a few things here. Let's go to blur. Let's go to Gaussian blur. Let's add 0.2 pixels just to blur it a little bit. So look at that. I don't know if you saw this image and you didn't know that there wasn't a boat there. I mean, this is pretty wild. There's so many things you could do. All right, where this is really gonna be disruptive is in creating fine art. So here's an image from Mike Kelly. He's an incredible architectural photographer. He did this amazing photo series where he took photos from the bottom of all these planes in flight, and then he mapped them out kind of in a wallpaper motif. Mike, let's see if it can reproduce your work. Generate, boom, let's see what it does. I have to say in many ways, this is more exciting to me than Mid Journey, where you just put in some prompts and wait to see what it's going to make up. This actually is taking your artwork and now massaging it into the AI world, which is really exciting, but in some ways 
this is kind of the thing we've all feared because now you can manipulate your images and create this hybrid that really wasn't possible before. Okay, so clearly some of these planes look a little uh, special and uh, I don't think that it works perfectly, but it's not bad. I mean, if it can do this right now in the beta version, just like we saw with Mid Journey, I mean, this thing's gonna be amazing in five months. Now, before I get into another photograph here, I wanna ask for your help. I'm not gonna say subscribe to our channel or hit that little bell. Instead, what I want you to do is help us get some more views. We have almost a million subscribers, and yet look at the views on this video. The algorithm is definitely off. So one way that I think you guys can help us, go to the top search bar on YouTube, type in F-Stoppers, and then click on any video that shows up. I think that's really gonna help our channel. Of course, you could also leave a comment below, that helps as well, but hopefully when we get this channel back on track. Let's jump into another image here. This one is really wild as well. All right, here's an image of mine that I always felt like I wish I could have gone back in time and added a few more production elements and different assets to create a photo that just is a little bit more compelling. When I look at this image, it was supposed to be a fashion shoot, but it kind of feels like a creepy movie poster or something. It's got this Westworld vibe to it, but it doesn't have those elements that it needs to really push it over the top. And so one thing that I wanna do, let's come down here. I wanna add something on this table. So I'm just gonna highlight the table here I love the texture in this table. I always thought this image would be cool if these were like pioneer women who are also murderers and on the run, you know, outlaws. So in order to do that, I thought it would be cool to have some kind of weapon on the table. So let's type in antique rifle. Oh, the generated images were removed because they violate user guidelines. I don't know that you can do a gun. Let's try something else. Let's try like a, what did Davy Crockett have, a musket? That's a really weird word to ban. Ah, they remove that as well. What is something that's creepy that might work? Uh, what about like a pickaxe? Ah, there we go. Look, it put some kind of axe in there. Some kind of like pickaxe. It's kind of what I was going for. That looks really cool. It's ambiguous enough to where you don't know if they're dangerous or if they're out there digging for gold. I also think, what if we put something over here on the left side of the image? Let's go with something like wooden garden tools. One thing that really helps with this sort of stuff with using AI to create art is being real specific in the words and language that you use to try to one, produce the best asset, but then two, to kind of get around some of the guidelines that might be put in place. It's kind of cool, I don't know what that is. Also, let's come down here and add levels, and then we can pull back the whites. See, I can kind of change the intensity. So let's turn this on and off. You can see the before and after. I mean, that tool on the table, I feel like, really adds a lot. All right, so we know Photoshop doesn't like guns. What happens if we actually put a gun in the photograph? So here's another photo shoot that I did. Let's go ahead and crop out some of the image. Let's expand it. This is a little bit more complicated. Will it be able to build the gun back? Boom, look at that, look at that. All right, so it's a little wonky. And if you're a gun nut, then you probably will look at this and say like, that's not the way it looks. You can see my light stand here looks a little strange. Again, I don't know that your eye would ever really go straight to it. Now, if we zoom in down here, it is struggling to create really sharp foliage and grass and pine straw. It's kind of blurry. So that's not perfect yet. Maybe there's a way to upsize these. There is some like weird artifacting here. So it's not perfect. But again, if you're just making something for Instagram, or you're just trying to expand your canvas a little bit, this is a pretty crazy tool at the moment. All right, let's go real extreme with this background change. Let's try to make this like a horizontal image. Let's see what it can do. This is gonna be amazing for graphic designers and e-commerce and anything where you just need to expand the background and, and you know use it in different formats. Whoa, okay, it's not like I don't know, there's elements of this that are amazing and then there's elements that look, I don't know about this flare, that's kind of weird. If I don't like the flare, let me just select it and go to generate again. Okay, so I got rid of it pretty easily. And look, it creates these different layers, but it also keeps the variation. So I can come here and see what this variation look like. That looks pretty good. Sure beats trying to clone this out on your own. Let's try this, add painter's ladder. Is it gonna be able to do it? Is it gonna be able to do it? Will it do it? Is it gonna look like clip art? Is it gonna look good? I don't know, what do you think? Is that convincing or not? I mean, if you don't have access to props or you forgot to put them in your image, 
This is definitely the way to do it. And again, this is the beta, like it's only gonna get better. So there you go. How is this gonna change photography? I don't know. It's extremely exciting, but it's also, I feel like it's leading to the inevitability of photographers being a thing of the past, right? Or at least the way that we knew it. And if you're gonna be successful photographer, you're gonna have to adapt and start using these tools to make your images look even better than everybody else's. Of course, it's not gonna replace, I hope, uh, shooting reality, whether that's weddings or headshots or people or architecture, where it has to be captured exactly the way that it is in real life. But who knows, maybe down the road, Photoshop's gonna even be able to replicate reality. So if you're a photographer, I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of this in the comments below. If you're not a photographer and somehow came across this video, I'm especially excited to hear what you have to say. Is this ruining the creative field of photography? or is this just another tool that we all have at our disposal? Let me know. If any of you have interest in photography and how to become a better photographer without using these AI trickery tools, check out the tutorials we've done in our store. We have some really thorough tutorials on different genres of photography like headshots, landscape, architectural photography, shooting weddings. So if there's a genre that maybe you're interested in, definitely check out the tutorials there. Or if you're not sure what kind of photography you like, check out the Well-Rounded Photographer where we have eight different instructors giving you a glimpse into their field. Maybe you'll find something that you really enjoy. All right, so I gotta get to bed, it's late, but I'm probably gonna wake up in the morning questioning everything I know about photography. Welcome to the world of AI.